Hi, I'm Paul Stouffer. I am an intern at Davidson College's Van Every Smith Galleries, and I am here today with Ellen Mueller, whose video Resist in Place is being shown on campus this fall. Ms. Mueller is an interdisciplinary artist who explores the environment and larger social, economic, and political issues through video, collage, sculpture, and other media. She earned a BA in Theater and Art and a BS in Design Technology from Bemidji State University and her Master's in Studio Art from the University of South Florida. Ellen Mueller is now the director of the MFA program at Minneapolis College of Art and Design. Thank you so much for being with me here today. Thanks, Paul. It's a pleasure. <laughs> All right. So to jump right in, I just wanted to first start talking about the title of the piece. So, in looking at the description, resist in place is a reference to a quote about mm -hmm. sort of capital capitalism, capitalist systems that exploit people and kind of reimagining how we interact with natural resources and natural spaces. So can you look can you talk a little bit about what that means? <laughs> Absolutely. It's um it's a sort of abstract idea, but I I um uh, as an artist I am constantly grappling with the fact that we're really pushed to monetize every moment of every day. Right. Um, it's part of maintaining your presence on Instagram, Facebook, wherever, you know, online, you have to constantly be, be hustling to, um, if not make, you know, money uh, to promote your profile and, right. and constantly be on. And, uh, that the ideas um, that I was reading about at the time I was making this work were really looking at what does it mean to consciously opt out of that? And that that can be an act of resistance, even if it's very small, um, it can be a way not. Uh, working within that system of money and money making so great yeah um, so pretty pretty relevant to the natural world and relevant to individuals just trying to navigate the systems that we all kind of exist within um, absolutely so you're delving into these kind of these significant social political environmental issues but in this specific piece, at least when I looked at it, it sort of reminded me of this kind of childlike sense of wonder of looking up at the sky. So I just was wondering if you could talk about how you engage, engage with serious topics, but also in kind of a nuanced way. Absolutely. Uh, that's a really good question because it's it's one that I spend a lot of time thinking about. Um, and so this is a video work, but I also work with a lot of participatory social practice based work, um, drawing okay. and other things like that. So I'm constantly thinking about my audience and how can I bring them in? How can I connect with them and play? is one of the ways that I'm really keyed into and I've found some success with. Um, other ways that I've connected with my audience before include um, food or eating together or just simply the act of conversation um, in small groups or one-on-one. -on -one. And so amongst those three, I often oscillate um, between them, whether it's play, conversation, eating together. I use that sort of as a tool to engage with these more um, complex or heavy ideas. And so you hit the nail on the head. The, the idea of uh, what is it to playfully look at the sky? What is it to playfully rearrange the sky and right. create different compositions with what we see up there? Yeah, that's it. I think you do a, a really good job of sort of engaging with our, I don't know, bringing up memories for me at least, but then also getting us to engage with deeper thoughts and definitely sparking conversation, which I think is why Davidson <laughs> really wanted this piece. <laughs> that's great to hear. <laughs> um, so you also look at who can engage and participate. So these ideas of privilege come up, um, larger capitalist systems in operation, and like common natural spaces and resources. Mm -hmm. So how exactly do privilege and impact come into the conversation? 
I'm, I'm glad you bring it up because anytime I talk about this piece, I try to foreground the fact that um, inherent in that idea of leisure as resistance or mm -hmm. to resist in place, that that's laden with privilege. Uh, right. Not everybody has time to, to take up leisure activities, to even take a walk and look up at the sky is a privilege. Mm -hmm. um, some folks, depending on what their circumstances are, they're not going to have um, a whole lot of time outside during daylight, you know, like they might be going right. from job to job to job. Um, and so it's really important to acknowledge that and to foreground the fact that this is an activity, this playfulness um, that allows us to sort of push on and break free of, of some of the capitalist structures momentarily. Um, but the, the, for those who have that, that opportunity, it is a privilege and we need to acknowledge that. Not to say we shouldn't try to imagine different futures. I think that's vital to, to um, <laughs> the future of the planet, really. <laughs> and so, um, so we need to be doing that, but I think it's also central to that argument or that idea that we acknowledge not everybody gets to do that. And so what are we gonna do about that? Right, because obviously there's privilege in being able to look up and engage with these spaces, not to mention actually like being in the, in the plane and everything Absolutely. that that suggests. Um, the fact that it's leaving a sort of physical mark on the environment. Yep. So these contrails, like what, is, what does that mean? And I think for me, it also brought up the idea of like, it, this is kind of a normalized image, right? Planes flying overhead, but if you really stop to think about it, it's not necessarily, it's not natural at all, really. Right. Like why, why is it normalized? Should it be normalized? Absolutely. Yeah, it has. I think that's what intrigues me about this particular piece is there's a lot of different points of entry. Like you can look at it from the um, capitalist leisure point of view, the environmental point of view, and then simply the idea of compositionally, it's mm -hmm. beautiful to look right. at the sky and to look at these things. And what does that mean when all three of these or more are possibly fighting against each other? You know, there's yeah. a lot there to consider. For sure. So I'm an environmental studies major, so coming at it kind of from the environmental lens, um, what are you trying to explore with the, the condensation trails, kind of these lingering effects of the planes that are just left there and kind of slowly dissipate? I, well, what you just mentioned, the element of time is really interesting to me. And the idea of um, if, you, if you don't look up at the right moment, you might miss it entirely. But... Yeah it does last in the sky longer than the plane itself. Um, so there's something interesting about that um, slow disappearance that, that I'm just right. generally interested in, um, ephemerality and the idea of uh, the momentary chance, you know, like the chance encounter with these lines in the sky. Um, in terms of the environment, I have done a, like, Good amount of reading about uh, a lot of conspiracy theories related to chemtrails and these um, yeah. <laughs> things happening in the sky and um, that is also really interesting to me is uh, I've, I've done a lot of work and and research into cults and uh -huh. what is groupthink and what is um, a lot of <laughs> a lot of uh, what happens to humans when they when they gather and they verge on fanaticism mm -hmm. and so when I look at these and I think of them through that lens versus um, just a lens of, of aesthetics or beauty and how 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 uh, there's a disconnect there there's sort of a Very different. yeah exactly <laughs> So, so I, I, I've always been really interested in what is it to hold two seemingly opposing things in your head at once. Mm -hmm. And that's partly what, what interests me with the environmental lens there is like, hmm. like clearly, clearly we all know like air travel is bad for the environment. It's not good. But then right. um, some of those other theories take it even further, you know, into the realm of conspiracy. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting to think about that spectrum of belief or, right. or not, non-belief. You know? <laughs> I had no idea there was that, that level to the piece, but yep. that's great. Another thing is, I guess, kind of going off the idea of levels is the idea or the concept that these 
contrails are kind of moving in and out of focus in the video. So yep. first of all, like how, how did you do that? And why, what was the thought process behind that? Uh, that that's a good question and it lands more in the realm of technical approach. So I edit all of my videos in Adobe Premiere and okay. um, they have a lot of very accessible tools for accessing um, simple visual effects like reflection, repetition, focus. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I play for hours before I decide on what I, I want to land on. And for this one, that idea of ephemerality and disappearance and reappearance really appealed to me. So I gravitated towards um, that idea of focus and okay. played a lot with um, blurring features and also scale and mm -hmm. moving, getting really close to the fine lines and then also backing way out. Um, and uh, so yeah, it's all done within Adobe Premiere. And uh, I was I was thinking of myself almost like a person drawing as I created it, even though I was in video software, I was thinking right. very much about the composition of the of the rectangle and what I wanted to be more dominant or less dominant at, at a given time. Right. Yeah, I think it's it's really effective at creating these layers, these levels and kind of emphasizing the lingering effect like you were talking about planes are like the most instantaneous way of travel pretty much that we have but these effects kind of stay around and they they start to fade but they're not they're not really gone like they'll continue to exist so yeah. i think that's I'm, I'm not sure if that was the intent but that's <laughs> that was effective for me in my understanding of the piece that's great i love to hear people's interpretations of these things and certainly that's not far off from from the intention but i think that's some of the magic of art is that Right. people bring their, themselves to it and so you start to see these extrapolated interpretations that are so interesting right um on that note are there any other levels or elements that maybe i haven't brought up but that you consider important to the piece or are trying to explore or, or bring up that's a good question. It's when I originally started this, I was thinking of it as part of a three part series and okay. I did the sky first. And then I also have a whole bunch of footage left for um, one relating to the land and, and walking across um, sort of vegetated areas. And then I have a whole bunch of footage related to water. And so these are sort of still percolating. They're on the back burner, okay. um, but I'd, I'd really like to see the work um, and the series expand in those two directions, thinking about, um levels in terms of what's above us what's sort of at our right. level and then if we think of water as perhaps below um that was sort of the strata that i was thinking mm -hmm. about um, yeah that's great that. yeah. i was going to ask if you were thinking of engaging with other sort of climatic or environmental elements or yeah. anything like that so obviously <laughs> obviously you are <laughs> i am yes i'm excited to engage with that it's since I, I will say since the um, pandemic and and a lot of uh, other life things have happened, I've been in this position I'm in right now for two right. years, and so um, this piece started right before I began this job. So and yeah. then with the new new uh, you know just getting used to a new job, there's a lot of chaos. Right. And <laughs> And 2020. <laughs> and 2020. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you see any anything that's happened in 2020 from pandemic to sort of social issues that have been brought to the forefront? Um, even if they may not have been the original inspiration, do you think this piece comments on any of that? I, I think absolutely. If if one wanted to interpret it through the lens of 2020, I see a lot of um, messaging about like the blur between work and life now. Mm -hmm. And uh, since a lot of folks absolutely. are working from home, there is no start and end of your work day. Right. And so that idea of what is it to consciously opt out of that nonstop system is mm -hmm. is I think definitely a big part of a lot of people's lives right now. So, Absolutely. and it's something that I'm turning to a lot. Like I take a walk every day because I have to. <laughs> I have to opt out for a little while. Otherwise I would just go, go, go until I fizzled out. Right, I totally see that. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, I'll let Davidson know that you have these other 
projects on the back burner to continue to explore these themes and hopefully we can <laughs> show some of those off here. That would be great. Um, well, I don't have any more questions. If you'd like to say anything else about the piece, about the work, feel um, free. <laughs> I think we've, we've hit most of it. Um, it's a pleasure to be in this exhibition. I, I think it's an honor to be shown, showing along so many other talented artists. And um, I, I really just want to thank Davidson and yourself. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Really appreciate it and really like your work. <laughs> oh, thanks, Paul. I appreciate it. I hope that everything goes well there this fall. <laughs>